Hello and welcome to Mary's Nutrition Show, coming to you live from Seattle, Washington. Our mission here is to help you look better, feel better, and live better one meal at a time. In this episode, Beyond Water, Nutritious, Delicious Beverages. Now here's your host, Integrative Registered Dietitian, Mary Purdy. Good evening. Coming to you live from Seattle, it's Mary Purdy, here with Mary's Nutrition Show, feeling extraordinarily hydrated. Happy to be here, and I would like to introduce the man behind the camera who also happens to be my husband, Keith Hitchcock of Hocus Pocus Media. Hello, Mary. I am so thirsty. Can we just skip to the part where you talk about beverages that we can drink? Not so fast. You're going to have to wait for that one. So just just... keep your thirst there, and I will hook you up shortly, I promise. Okay, okay. We are going to be talking about hydration and beverages today. And I'll be talking about why it is so important to hydrate and how much fluid you actually need and the creative ways that you can make it happen. And you are not gonna wanna miss this show because I will be talking about a beverage that you might just be drinking on a regular basis, which has a lot of nutritional benefits that you may not even be aware of. So stick around. Hey, if you listen to the audio podcast version of this show, you will get to hear the real music and not me just going like that. That is true. Please consult your doctor or registered dietitian before taking any of the advice on this show. And please know that the content of this show is not necessarily reflective of the organizations with whom I associate. Hey, Join the conversation tonight. If you're watching live, it is to the right of the window. There's comments and questions there. If you're watching the recording of the show on YouTube, there's a comment section underneath the video, and we try to respond to each and every comment and question, so bring it on. FYI, there will be a Q&A section later on. All right. Mary, what was last week's new? Weekly Nutrition Challenge. Last week was our salty episode, and my nutrition challenge to you was to try a condiment to replace or enhance your salty experience and see how it goes. So, how did it go? How did it go? We want to (laughs) know. Let us know. Drop a comment in the chat. Can I just tell you that uh, my dad was visiting, my parents were were visiting this weekend, Uh and uh, one of my dad's things is sauerkraut, and so we made sauerkraut together. We did. Yes. I can smell it right now in the kitchen. It's right over there. (laughs) It combines both the the salty Mm -hmm. that we talked about and fermented that we talked about. Two shows getting married. Yeah. Pretty neat, huh? Pretty neat. And what a great way to flavor your food, too, with a little sauerkraut on top of your eggs instead of a big bunch of salt. You get the extra added bonus of cabbage. And I believe he threw some carrots in there. And while we're talking about your parents, I got to just thank them. Give a shout out for this lovely dish towel right here. Eat local. Thank you very much. (laughs) Thank you, Nancy. (laughs) Okay, Mary, what's our main course tonight? Main course, or I should say main beverage, is Beyond Water, healthy and nutritious beverages. So I have four points about this today. And point number one is, why is hydration even important? Well, I will tell you, water or fluids are essential for every single function in our bodies. Water helps to regulate our temperature. It helps to regulate our blood volume, which helps with our blood pressure and keeping it nice and normal. It helps with our pH balance to keep our balance of our blood in check. It helps our kidneys to function so we can filter things out. It helps our digestive tract so we can make sure that our stool passes through our digestive tract and gets eliminated properly. It is absolutely essential and we need to stay hydrated throughout the year, whether it is hot or cold. And you may wonder, well, point number two, how much water do I actually need? How much do I need, Mary? Good question. I know you're thirsty over there, so I'm going to tell you. Be patient, my friend. (laughs) Many people believe they need eight ounces, eight cups a day. So that may be true for many people, but actually it's not just a blanket recommendation for everybody. It is a highly, highly calculated equation that depends on your height, your weight, your gender, your activity level, your age, and it can be calculated kind of generally by using more than just the eight 
glasses of water a day, I bring up my trusty, trusty calculator. And essentially... Um, Mary, some people watching may not understand what that device is. Can you explain that? Oh, this is a calculator. You push little buttons and it creates numbers and equations using a division sign and a multiplication sign and a minus sign. Okay, very often uh, you, you might see a, a smartphone, smartphone doing that sort of thing. That's so true. That's, this is uh, a, an antiquated piece of equipment, but uh, that's what I'm going to use. So are you ready? Please proceed. Thank you. You take your weight, and I'm just going to throw out a weight in there, about 150 pounds. Now, if you're dealing with excessive weight, this equation may not necessarily apply, and that's when it's great to work with a registered dietitian who can make sure that he or she gives you the exact number that, you, that would be optimal for you. Again, it's going to re re depend on your um, your exercise and how much you're sweating, because that means you're losing some of that water. So about 150 pounds, let's just throw that number out there. Divide that by about two, which I'm going to do right here. And that equals, what do you think? 75. 75. We're going to multiply that by about 30. And that's going to equal 2250. And wait, that's wait, where'd you get the 30? The 30 is the calculation. Oh. So this is the calculation. So you divide your weight by half and then multiply that by about 30. And then you get the number, which is 2250 milliliters. But no one drinks milliliters except in Europe. <laughs> so we translate that to liters, which we also don't really drink, although we kind of do because, you know, people drink like a liter of Coke, which I wouldn't advise, but it is in liters. And so you're needing about 2.2 liters of fluid a day if you're about 150 pounds which is the equivalent of about two and a half quarts because a liter is 33 ounces, a quart is about 32 ounces. That's a lot of numbers. So it's best to work with somebody to help calculate that number that's gonna be the best number for you and your activity level, height, weight, and of course, goals. What do we ended up, up with there, two quarts? About 2.2 .2 liters. So that's a, a, a bit beyond two quarts, about two and a half quarts. So was it six, then uh, 32 times two to make 64 ounces? <laughs> yes, exactly. Like a super big gulp? Right, but 64 ounces would be eight cups of water. Oh. This is beyond eight cups of water. You do need a little bit more than just eight cups of water if you're 150 pounds. Unless you sit around and you don't necessarily sweat or move your body. The exercise component kicks it up a few um, pieces because you're going to be losing fluid through your, your breath and your sweat. Does that make sense? Uh, I, w yeah. <laughs> Uh-oh, am I confusing people? There was, there was just a lot of numbers. And so numbers. What, I, what I heard was 30, uh, uh, what I came up with, with was around 64 ounces for us, someone who was 150 pounds. Was I off? I said it's about two and a half quarts. So one quart is 32 ounces, two quarts would be 64 ounces, and then a half. Oh, uh, okay, right? so a little, okay. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay, thank you for clarifying because you may not be the only confused person out there. Yes. Not everyone's good with the numbers, especially when they rely on their iPhone to tell them everything. <laughs> I know this isn't an iPhone, but I'm just using it as if it was. <laughs> Let me just check my text real quick. <laughs> oh my God, I'm on Mary. Facebook. What? Mary, oh, we're... is it time to get back to the show? Hi, Mary Purdy here, registered dietitian. <laughs> Oh my God, point number three. I can hear you saying, water's boring. I don't like water. I don't want to drink water. It has no flavor. I don't like it. Well, people, you don't have to drink plain old water. You can spruce it up with all different kinds of flavors, fruit, herbal teas, vegetables, which we'll get into shortly. So I'm going to show you some ways to spruce up water because you do not have to sit there and gulp down plain old water if it doesn't suit your taste buds. Point number four. The thing that I love about beverages is that they can provide additional nutritional value to your diet without necessarily adding a lot of extra calories. Now, of course, there are some beverages that have a lot of calories and we try to minimize those. Hello, Frappuccino. Um, but there are many, many beverages that you can drink and feel really healthy about because they're just providing you with some vitamins, with some minerals, with some phytochemicals, AKA things that provide antioxidant potential. And these are things like your herbal teas, your black teas, your white teas, your green teas. And this, my friend, is where I'm calling back to that little hook at the beginning. If you're drinking iced tea on a regular basis, unsweetened, 
you are not only not getting additional caloric input from a, a beverage, but you're getting some beneficial antioxidant potential from that black iced tea. Oh, nice. Yeah. That's the good news of the show. <laughs> There's lots of good news, but that's just one component. So you may already be gaining some nutritional benefits by a cup of iced tea with your lunch or a cup of iced tea as a snack. Perhaps a little shoot of lemon in your iced tea for a little extra citrus vitamin C. Oh, <laughs> but next, I am going to expand the world beyond the iced teas that Ooh, you already know and okay. love. Are you ready for this? Oh, yeah, just try to blow my mind. May I present three glasses of water? Plain old water. We're about to turn these waters into fantastic beverages that will titillate your taste buds and make you dream of water all night long. So, what I would like to start off with is something extraordinarily simple. If you do not have the wherewithal to chop things, because it's very difficult to chop things. Oh, it's so hard. Oh, so it hard. takes so much time. The energy to chop, oh my God. Yeah. So if you're not a chopper, well, I love this little tea sampler. Very, very simple. You take a tea bag. If you're, you're, not, a, if you're not a chopper, you're a shopper. You're t you are definitely a shopper. Good one, I like it. This is a Celestial Seasonings Raspberry Zinger. I'm not even gonna heat up this water. This water is cold, cold. To prove it to you, it's cold. I'm putting it against my cheek, right? I'm just gonna stick this in there and we're gonna shake it around and see what happens. We'll bring, we'll bring you back to that. But maybe you are a chopper. And if you are, then let's transform this water from plain old water to cucumber water. Whoa. Voila. That looks so easy, Mary. So easy. <laughs> and let's transform this water. That was our vegetable water. Let's transform, let's transform this water into fruit water with some strawberries. Oh, so pretty. So pretty and so delicious and nutritious. <laughs> so we threw that in the, in the mix. But wait, there's more. No. Yes. More? More? Numerous. And we are just scratching the surface here. This is a sampler plate of all the different ways that you can include interesting and nutritious beverages into your diet to expand your notion of what it means to be hydrated. So I've got a few ideas for you. This is a beverage that I absolutely love. It's called Kevita. It's a sparkling probiotic beverage. It's very, very simple. This one happens to be lemon ginger, highly refreshing. Virtually uh, hardly any sugar in here. Mm -hmm. mm. Very, very refreshing and tasty. Ooh, ooh, oh, can I try some is of it that? time? Oh, All yeah. right. You may, you may now begin the drinking okay. festivities. Here's another one, kombucha, another fermented beverage. And the fun thing about this, aside the fact that it's $3.75, <laughs> which is ridiculously expensive, but if you're buying frappuccinos, you've got the cash. Oh, that's a good point. Yeah. This is a raspberry chia beverage, which means there's some chia seeds in there, which is a wonderful source of additional fiber and omega-3 fatty acids and a touch of protein and gives an extra little journey down the throat that makes your esophagus have a little, um, it, it, little escapade <laughs> i'm gonna take a sip of this too mm. hey do mm. can you pass that over here you got it okay. oh boy those chia seeds are delicious so i'm already feeling hydrated but i'm not bored do i look bored no you look no. you look satiated i am not i'm not satiated yet oh, not i'm yet. still thirsty <laughs> there's more this is kvass. This was also featured on our fermented food show. This is beet kvass. So it's a fermented beverage made from beets. Look at that gorgeous color. Here's another example of a beverage that is providing nutritional value and benefit. Mm. I just want to note. Oh man, that's good. And the, these last three ones, um, it, people can tune into our fermented episode and and mary talks about probiotics and, yeah. and you know fermented stuff and and each of those past three drinks would fit the bill they would and they have beneficial um, effects on your gut as well they help can help with digestion so i'm gonna just gonna try this please one. do um i think i feel like i have a purple tongue at this point because i just drank beets <laughs> the last one that i want to recommend and call out is coconut water so coconut water it does have calories as do all of those beverages that i just spoke about but the wonderful thing about coconut water, again, aside from being a little more expensive than anyone wishes or should have to pay for, 
It is a wonderful replenisher of electrolytes. It's very, very high in potassium, which is a very important mineral for muscle contraction and um, for kidney function as well. So this is a lovely refreshing beverage. You want to definitely look for the ones that have no added sugar in them. These are naturally sweet and about uh, an eight fluid ounce serving of this is about 50 calories. So if you want to minimize the cows, you don't necessarily have to drink the entire thing, but boy, oh boy. Mm. Well, that looks good. So refreshing. Can, can I give that I'm a try? I'm going to pass this over to you oh, right now. Thank are you, you so swimming much. in liquids already? Oh, yeah. This is great. So, of course, these are all cold beverages, but of course, there are numerous warm, lovely beverages like your teas. We will have a tea episode dedicated to the value and nutritional goodness of all the teas out there green, white, black. Pu'er, rooibos, and many, many more. But you could always open up a tea bag, throw it in some hot water, and either drink a hot beverage if you're feeling in the mood for something warm, or pour it over ice and have yourself another cup of iced tea. Voila! Those are just a few ideas for you folks out there who feel like, boy, water is boring. Well, not anymore. Not on my watch, all right? <laughs> so go out there and expand your notion of fluids. Okay, it is time for the Q&A. So if you have a question out there in watching the episode land, um, go ahead and drop that in chat right now. Um, if you're watching live, we can answer it right now. And if you're watching the recording of this on YouTube, put it in there. And we... <laughs> We, we do watch these questions and we answer them. We try to answer each and every one. So if you have a question, whenever, um, drop it in there. I have a question, Mary. Can, Can we just check in on the hibiscus zinger? Okay. I want to show you. Look at oh this. Oh my gosh. Well, that was maybe three minutes. According to my calculations, that was approximately 3.7 <laughs> minutes. That's amazing. Look at that. Deliciousness. How's it? Yeah, how's it taste? Very subtle, very subtle, huh, okay. and very delicious. I, I, I would put some ice cubes in there just for fun, but yeah. yeah. Okay, my question yes. is this. Juice. Let's talk apple juice, pineapple juice, mm. the juices. Yeah, the juices are ones that I tend to not recommend because they are so incredibly high in sugar. Oh, but so, this is natural sugar. This is fruit sugar. It is. It is fruit sugar, but it is quite concentrated. So in order for someone to create a cup of orange juice air or a cup of apple juice, they're using the juice or the sugars from about four or five apples. So because there's no fiber that's helping to mitigate or temper the impact of sugars just coming directly into your bloodstream, it tends to be pretty harsh on your system. So I, I really recommend if you're going to do juice, stick to absolutely no more than two to four ounces at one time because it can be an overload of sugar on your system. So hold on, but you make you make smoothies with fruit in it. So mm -hmm. what's what's the difference? The difference is the fa 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 fiber. Oh. Right? So when we just have sugar, our blood sugar tends to go more up. But because fiber digests more slowly. It does a little job on the sugar and helps to keep it more balanced. So fiber slows down the rate at which your body absorbs the sugar. But if you're just having apple juice, that's 29 grams of sugar, depending on how much of it you drink, that goes into your system as readily and rapidly digested quite easily. Okay, I have another question, which I think I know how you're going to answer this. The, the energy drinks. Mm. Very good. Very good question. I'm sorry, I'm just chewing a little strawberry for my beverage. Um, the energy drinks are a fantastic marketing scheme to get people to feel like they can open up a can of energy and drink it down. But mostly they are loaded with caffeine, sugar, and other chemicals that do not serve the body well at all. And talk about a highway robbery. They are highly expensive and you're basically paying for the ads that you're seeing on the bus and in the magazines that make you feel like if you drink those, you are either a monster, a rock star, or a bull of sorts. <laughs> <laughs> and those artificial sweeteners, while I'm at it, don't add any kind of health benefits at all, nor has it been proven in any way, shape, or form. And there was just a study that came out about this yesterday that it has any positive benefits on weight loss. In fact, it has the opposite effect and has the potential to increase your risk for things like diabetes and metabolic syndrome and potentially has a negative impact on our gut microbiome or the good bacteria that live in our guts. So cut out the artificial sweeteners. If you really need something sweet, have a teeny bit of the sugar or the honey. One teaspoon is only 20 calories anyway, and I recommend doing that over the artificial sweetener any day, to be honest. Okay, 
a question has come in. Oh my gosh! Um, from the chat. Do which, I need to get my calculator out? <laughs> okay, it's. Uh, I, I think you've already really answered this in okay. the smoothie question. Uh, it, uh, it, it's about apple juice, a- apple juice in the morning smoothies, uh, where there's also almond milk and some flaxseed and banana and kale and other stuff. And uh, yeah. so I would say okay. unless someone is utilizing that apple juice as a pre-workout way to to bring themselves uh, some more carbohydrate for um, a higher stamina performance uh, in an exercise routine, I would not advise using apple juice in the morning in your smoothie unless it's the only possible way that you will eat kale or other vegetables because it helps to temper the bitterness. But Definitely cut back on the apple juice um, to maybe half if you feel like you're used to it and you normally have the apple juice to make sure that the smoothie tastes favorable to you. Uh, try cutting it in half and seeing if, see if that still works. All right. Thanks for that question. And yeah. Mary, what's a recap of our main course today? Recap is hydration is essential. Fluids are absolutely important for every function in your body, from your brain to your belly. And you do not have to get stuck just drinking plain old water. You can be creative and spruce up your beverages on a regular basis with all different kinds of fruits, vegetables, herbs, spices, teas, and what have you. So I'm so excited. I'm actually still chewing on that piece of strawberry (laughs) that was in my drink. (laughs) So drink up and enjoy yourself. And now for the weekly nutritional challenge. My weekly nutritional challenge to you is, guess what? Try a new beverage that you have never tried before. Make it yourself, buy it yourself, borrow it from a friend, steal it from a pal, but try something new that will titillate your taste buds in a new direction. And let us know how it goes. Yes, we want to hear about it. So try something and drop drop something in the chat underneath, underneath the video or email us. We'd yeah. love to hear about how those things go. Mm-hmm. Hey, if you appreciate the show, you can help us out by subscribing to the Mary Pretty YouTube channel and or subscribing to the Mary's Nutrition Show podcast. Best place to find that is on iTunes. And uh, mm. let us know what you want to hear about and what you're thinking about and how you are experiencing these shows. So... Um, you can find us at maryperdy.co. That's M A R Y P U R D Y dot C O. So, um, thanks for joining us today. Thanks for joining the conversation. Thanks for your questions. Thank you, Mary, for the info. And next week, next you- week is our special diets episode. I'm going to take on not one, not two, but three different popular diets out there paleo, vegan, and anti-inflammatory. Come and join us and learn a little bit about each one. It's an extra special episode and it's actually going to be extra special long. Usually Mm -hmm. these are 20 minute episodes or so. We're going to go about 45 minutes so we can cover these three different diets in a thorough, proper way. So this should be fun. It should be. I can't wait to do it. See you next week. Let's roll the credits. All right. This show was produced by Keith Hitchcock and Hocus Focus Media. <laughs> this show is intended for information and entertainment purposes only. It is not intended to replace or substitute professional health advice or care, and should not be used for diagnosing or treating a health problem or disease. Please consult your physician or registered dietitian before following any advice contained here. Never disregard professional medical advice or delay in seeking it because of something you have learned associated with this show. The opinions expressed on the show are those exclusively of Mary Purdy, the show staff and guests, all those guests that we had today, and do not necessarily represent the views or policies of Arabelle, Bastier, dietitians in integrative and functional medicine, or other entities. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.